Hi everyone, in this uh, video we're going to be making a, uh, a light panel, LED light panel, which I'm going to use to light up the uh, inside of my spray booth. So you can see me, first of all, cutting out some plywood and we're getting that down to dimensions, which is about 400 by 250 mil, uh, which is the size of the panel I want. Then I cut um, some 20 mil strips uh, both of off-cut plywood and also some pine because I just had that available at the right length which gives us essentially the sides. Now all I do here is just glue them on with a bit of tight bond. Um, I don't have to screw them down, this isn't going to be subject to any vibration so it should be good enough so we just uh, clamp those and glue them around the uh, perimeter. Now I just started off just by clamping the corners together um, but you'll see when we come back after it's dried that I stuck some side clamps on this was next morning So taking some of the clamps off we have a look at this and we mark out and centre punch uh, essentially For drilling a hole in the side, which is where the power inlet or socket will be I'm just testing that for fit and then uh, quickly ran round the edge um, just a trim flush trim the uh, edge of the plywood up to the frame and then it was all ready for some paint so I used white paint didn't want to use uh, silver foil or anything on the inside for extra reflectivity but white paint should do the job quite nicely just give it a, a couple of coats all over and it was just some old white paint I had left over um, from doing some decoration in the house then I uh, cut a sheet of perspex off to match the same size and then marked out uh, some for some holes in in the perspex and I left the backing white backing sheet on rather than um, scuff it up to make it into a diffuser and I'm just using the pillar drill here to drill the holes and using a cone drill which seems to work a lot better than standard twist drill so we didn't get any splits in that which was good and then we uh, screw down the uh, perspex onto the box essentially using uh, just standard wood screws but with a um, silicone o-ring essentially around each one just so avoid the countersink part of the screws from uh, splitting the perspex and a quick run round again with the router just to um, make sure everything's nice and flush to the sides and essentially that's the main box built so and then we get a, a roll of LEDs now these are really cheap they're daylight color ones uh, I think it was about three pounds was it about five dollars um, for five meters so really inexpensive just um, cut those you can cut them I think it's every three LEDs uh, cut them all to equal lengths apart from the last bit which was a bit shorter and used a ruler at one end there just to make sure that they're all kind of aligned and also cut away the silicone bit for the uh, contacts there's there's some uh, positive and negative tabs at each end unfortunately I cut through on one bit so you can see one's actually got a bit shorter there then taking some copper wire which I stripped out of some twin and earth uh, standard mains um, wiring I just hot glued that down to make a, a rail at each end of the strips and glued the hot glued the socket in as well and then because LED strips love to um, come undone at some stage also hot glued the LED strips down onto the into the inside of the box Now the reason for using the rail is I can add more strips to it if I need more light at a later date I don't think I'm going to need that uh, and then it was basically a case of wiring them all up in parallel which meant wiring one rail to the, all the positives at one end and the other rail to all the negatives at the other so um, essentially they, uh, the current if you like gets split at the point uh, where it comes into the box there and half of it runs to the positive and half of it goes to the negative so they're all running in parallel so there we go, a bit more hot glue there and also pre-tinned everything before soldering which just makes things a lot easier. Cut all the strips out that pre-tinned all the um, connecting wires uh, which just means that you can get the soldering iron onto it later. 
and just heat them up to actually do the actual soldering which is especially useful especially for the tiny little pads on the end of the uh, strips themselves where the solder doesn't like to flow very easily so got all that done and that probably took the most time i guess out of the whole operation um, it was a really quick project actually it took me about i guess about half a day plus a bit you know waiting time for drying plugged it in plugged the transformer on this is 12 volt dc and then flip the switch and you can see the camera struggling to cope with the brightness uh, but it does eventually change and we're all good everything's running so put the perspex lid back on and we'll just check it again to uh, make sure it lights up and you can see essentially that camera white backing on the perspex there is acting as a diffuser Ooh, and we cut straight over to the inside of the spray booth which is outside it's like a porch if you like on the outside of my workshop and screwed that onto the uh, roof then extended the wires that uh, ran out of the transformer just for using a bit of heat shrink and solder and plug that in and we should have with a bit of luck we flick the main switch and then flick the switch on the uh, actual unit itself and it comes on and it's glowing nicely so that should provide a lot more light for spraying so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you on the next video